So today we are gonna take a look at some ballistic materials used in prior years. We're gonna do some testing on it and see how it performs compared to kind of some more modern day materials. Now specifically, we're gonna be looking at some nylon material. Now, most people in the tactical community are very familiar with Cordura nylon. So Cordura really kind of makes the backbone of most tactical gear. Whether it's 500D or 1000D Cordura, most tactical gear will use one of those two materials. Now there's also some variations on that, like you have Brookwood Squadron material, which is actually a few layers of Cordura that are laminated together. Um, but there's also another common nylon product used in the market, and that is ballistic nylon. Now it's similar to Cordura in the sense that it's nylon, but as you can guess by the name, it was originally developed for ballistic purposes. In the early days of ballistic protection, or I should say modern day ballistic protection, because we're talking World War II, the, uh, this is before Kevlar and similar materials were developed. The military experimented with silk and nylon for ballistic protection. DuPont created this ballistic nylon for World War II, and it was developed to be used in flak jackets worn by airmen. Now that was, the slack jackets were designed to offer protection from shrapnel, from bullets, you know, from impact. Now it was, I mean, we can say it was ineffective at stopping rifle rounds and most pistol calibers as well. Uh, but it did provide some protection from shrapnel and impact. So it wasn't a bust. It definitely served a purpose. This uh, ballistic nylon, the original ballistic nylon, it's a 1050 denier and it's done in a basket weave. So you can see here compared to this Cordura, um, it's a much heavier weave pattern, and that's because it's a two by two basket weave. You can see that weave. It's a heavier material as well. Also, you can kind of see out here, it's a little bit more shiny than your Cordura. That's really just due to the yarn use. So uh, ballistic nylons used a filament yarn versus Cordura, which uses a textured yarn. So really, if you zoomed in a microscope, you'd see differences in those yarns. But you know, this is a, this ballistic nylon is a very, very heavier 10 to denier count. And uh, you know, there, there's trade-offs. Both have positive pros and cons to these materials as it is with any material. Uh, you see trade-offs, especially when you're talking weight and strength. Even with 1000D and 500D Corduras, you know, 1000D is going to be much stronger. Uh, it's gonna be more durable. It's also heavier and bulkier. Uh, this ballistic nylon is even heavier and bulkier than your 1000D Cordura, but it's gonna have a little higher tear strength. Now, that's why you most commonly see tactical gear, your pouches, your plate carriers are made out of 500D Cordura, just because it is plenty strong, really, almost overkill for its use case, yet it's lighter, um, keeps you more mobile and easier to use. Anyway, there's gonna be trade-offs with materials that we use. Now, in the ballistic world, um, this material is, you know, not, not really used anymore. It's been replaced by superior products such as Kevlar. Um, in other products, it is still used, so it's commonly used for things like luggage, motorcycle gear, tool belts, really things that need to be durable, things that can take a, a beating and you know, it's a very strong, really nice material for things like that. It's just been replaced in the ballistic world. It is kind of a cool material because it was somewhat of a stepping stone into those superior materials. So nylon is a synthetic material. It was developed for ballistic protection. And now we've, you know, DuPont, the same company has progressed up and made Kevlar, which is also a synthetic material used for ballistic protection. So this is kind of a stepping stone to get us to some of the new modern day materials that we have. So we thought today, for the sake of the history of body armor, we are going to test the performance of this ballistic nylon. So we'll take, I've cut out some eight by six squares here, eight inch by six inches. Uh, we're going to stack those up and we're gonna test them with some pistol calibers. We're not even gonna bother with rifle. We actually did a rifle test on Kevlar, which is superior to ballistic nylon. Uh, you can go check that video out if you want, but in essence, Kevlar's not made to stop rifle rounds, right? Um, it's kind of, it's kind of a fun video if you wanna go check it out where you can see how many layers of Kevlar it takes to stop a rifle versus a pistol round. So we're just gonna skip the rifle. We're gonna test this with some pistol calibers. Is what I've done is I've taken these, I've sewed them up in layers of 10, and then we'll stack those layers of 10 together and uh, we'll test them. So we've got a few different calibers um, we're gonna test with. So here is our panel. So this is the first one we'll test. We've got 30 layers of that ballistic nylon in here. So I've got three um, stacks of those layers of 10 in there and I've just sewn it up to kind of house it. Now we've, we've got a few different rounds. We'll first test it with a nine millimeter, obviously just the most common shot caliber. We'll see how it does against that. We've also got a 22 pistol, depending on the performance, we might, we'll test with 22 pistol. Also, I'm gonna caveat this before we ever do that, that if you've ever shot 
a little 22 pistol like this, accuracy is a struggle. So I might embarrass myself today if I have to use that. And also, if it does great, we'll even pull out the 44 Mac to test it with. Anyway, we can get to that. So we'll start with 30 layers. I have no idea how many layers of this stuff it might need to stop pistols. This is just a complete guess. So we're gonna start with 30, see how it performs, and we can adjust layers and caliber based upon that. So let's get to shooting. All right, so we got 30 layers of the ballistic nylon, your 1050 Danier ballistic nylon up on that clay box. We're gonna shoot it with a nine millimeter, just a, a Glock 19. So let's see if it's able to stop it or not. Well, I think I hit it. Let's go see. <laughs> All right, you can see the impact right there actually. So let's pull this back here. Oh yeah, we got a clean pass through. Right through that thing. So, 30 layers is not gonna be sufficient. Maybe we'll, uh, we do have a 40 layer. Let's uh, shoot this 30 layers with a 22 pistol and let's see if it stops the 22 pistol. Um, and then we'll, we'll start jumping layer count to see what we can get. All right, so the nine millimeter blew right through 30 layers. So while we got it there, I think we'll shoot with the 22 pistol just to see. Um, I only put one bullet in here. So uh, that's how confident I am I'm gonna hit that. I missed it. I only put one bullet in here. So uh, that's how confident I am I'm gonna hit that. Gosh dang it. I told you guys I was gonna embarrass myself if I got this thing out today. See that little hole right under it? <laughs> Round two. I'm gonna aim high this time. Oh yeah, we got impact. Let's go see. Let's go see if that stopped that one. So, uh, I actually shot that one right through the strap, so that might help it actually. That rubber strap might help stop that round. But let's see. Oh, no pass through and actually barely even a dent. So, that will easily stop a 30 layers of your stuff will easily stop a 22 pistol. So, um, <laughs> that's why I guess I said that. The material was rather ineffective at stop being uh, pistol calibers, but I guess a small enough caliber, it'll do the trick. I mean, you could stop that with minimal back face deformation with a lot less layers. Maybe we'll pull these apart and try it with 10 and see what it does. But anyway, let's jump up to 40 layers and shoot with nine millimeter and see if that 40 layers will stop the nine millimeter. All right, so we had our 30 layers of ballistic nylon, nine millimeter, nine mm blew right through it, 22 pistol, it did stop, so, Maybe we'll come back to that one a little bit later. But now we've got 40 layers of our ballistic nylon up there and we're gonna try again with the nine millimeter and see what we do. All right, let's go see. All right, so we got our impact right here at the top portion, clean hit. Um, let's see if we got a pass through. Ooh, once again, that's a clean pass through without much struggle it looked like, to be honest. Um, there's a little bit more deformation around this one, kind of like the impact actually, it was slowing it down and started to deform a little bit, but that's still a pretty quick pass through. So we are gonna have to jump up layers. You know what? So I only have a 30 layer and a 40 layer. So what we're gonna do, so I don't have to go tearing these apart, is I'm gonna stack all 70 layers and we're gonna shoot with a nine millimeter. If it stops it, then we'll pull it apart We'll try 50, we'll try 60, and we'll see where we get. But I'm just gonna stack both of them up here and we're gonna shoot all 70 layers. All right, so we just shot the 40 layers uh, ballistic nylon with 90 millimeter, still blew right through. I, uh, I made two panels, one with 30, one with 40, so I wasn't sure. But uh, we're just gonna stack both of them together and shoot it. I can't fold it in half either because I actually sewed the panels so they're a little more rigid. So I can't just fold one in half. So we're just gonna shoot the two panels 70 total layers, and let's see if it stops a 9mm. All right, let's go see if we have success. So 
So this was our first hit from the first shot. This is the hit that we just did down here. So this is our 30 layer. So we'll pull that out. You can see it pass through the 30 into the 40. Let's see if we have, ooh, we have a stop. So you can see no pass through right there. You can see a bit of a dent, but really actually that's not that bad on the deformation either. Um, so to me, NIJ standards, you'd have to have 44 milliliters or less. Um, this is, I mean, this is like nothing. This is like 10 millimeters maybe. So that's actually going to pass your standards even with a nine millimeter. Not 44 mag, but nine millimeters. So I guess somewhere in between 40 and 70, <laughs> it's quite a variation. So what we're gonna do, we will go back to the shop. I've got some more of the material. We'll cut these open. We'll stack, we'll do a 60 layer and uh, see if that stops it. And then we can also do a, if that doesn't, we need to go down to 50 layers and see if it does it. Um, actually, you know what? While we have it here, should we shoot it with the 44? Let's shoot it with the 44. We're gonna shoot 70 layers with the 44 and see what kind of deformation we get. We've got it here, let's do it. All right, so we had our two panels. We got 70 layers up there. It stopped the nine millimeter and actually did a good job on the back face deformation. I mean, that's a lot of material. Um, so we're gonna shoot it with the 44 Mac just to see what we get with that while we've got it out here. All right, let's go see that. All right, you can see that shot right there. It looks a lot bigger than the other ones, because it is. Um, so that's our 30 layers, blew right through. Here's our 40 layers. You can see the entrance there. Let's see if it stopped that. Woo, it did. Look at that. No pass on the back. That was our first shot, but these second two are actually, they're closer together than I would have liked. But, uh, but anyway, it stopped it. And actually the back face deformation is not that bad. Now I should caveat this. So with NIJ standards, your clay box has to be heated to an exact temperature um, and tested. It is, I mean, it's December out here and we're in a t-shirt, which is wild in Utah, but it's definitely not heated enough. So your deformation in an official testing would be much more than this. Um, but that being said, this is not bad. I didn't bring my gauge to even test it, but you're probably 15 to 20 millimeters there well, well under your 44. So maybe with the heated up clay box, you might be closer, but either way, I think, I think 70 layers of that will stop your 44 mag, which would meet your NIJ standards. So that's actually pretty awesome. Now that is a ton of material. I mean, look how thick that is. So what we're gonna do is, as I said, we'll go back to the shop. This is all I brought. Didn't know what to expect, but we'll cut these out and we'll make a new stack of 50 or 60 and we'll come and test that and see if it will do the job. So, let's do it. All right, so we took the panels back to the shop. We cut them open, just kind of interesting. So that 22 pistol, it only made it, it got stuck in the first 10 layers of this ballistic nylon. So it didn't even penetrate out the back of the first 10 layers. It seems like it's about seven or eight deep in there when we cut it open. And then we checked the, the 44 mag and the nine millimeter. So those ones are 44 mag. Looked like it was about 45 layers deep is where it got stopped. And then the nine millimeter went almost 55 layers. Uh, the best estimate we had on those. Um, you can just tell by the panels, we pulled these out and you could see where each were stuck in there. We pulled those slugs out and counted back to layers. So it was about 45 for the 44 mag, 55 for the nine millimeter. So what we did is we took a we made to compare, we wanted to kind of compare it to our current 3A armor that we use, just using modern technology. So our 3A panel is made out of UHMWP8 and Kevlar. It's a, a hybrid um, panel. And we said, okay, well, let's see how the two compare. Kind of ballistic material used in World War II versus today. Now, this is 55, 54 layers to be exact. So right around where that nine millimeter stopped it. And we'll slap this up on the box and shoot it as well, let's, just to see how it does. Um, but based upon the results, this should stop a nine millimeter. Now you can see the difference here. <laughs> yeah, that ballistic nylon, uh, just to give you an idea, it weighs almost four pounds, just under four pounds. Our, our 3A panel weighs just under one pound. This one is 1.3 inches thick, and this one is 0.3 inches thick. So you can just 
quickly see there the difference in advancement in technology. Um, we're not trying to say that, hey, this is a good armor option. We're just saying, hey, this is what they used in World War II. They designed this for ballistic protection. Um, this is materials used today. And you can just see the advancement in technology there. It's, uh, it's pretty drastic. So before we wrap up, we're gonna slap this up on the clay box. We'll shoot it just to see, and we built it. Let's shoot it and see. Um, see the kind of deformation that happens on it and if it is actually able to stop that nine millimeter without those few extra layers on there so we'll do that all right so we got our 54 layers at the 12 by tw 10 10 by 12 panel same size as our uh, our current soft armor so we're going to shoot that with a nine millimeter first we want to make sure it stops it it should and then also check the back face deformation all right So there's our impact right there, top center. And <laughs> shoot, it went through. So that actually went through. Darn it. Um, you can see that hole right there is the penetration. Came out the back. So when we shot the small panel, 54 layers stopped it. Um, but obviously those extra layers in behind the 54, because it had 70 in total, obviously reduced that penetration and, and stopped it from, from getting in there. So that's unfortunate. I was hoping it would stop it with a bigger panel. It could disperse it a little better, but uh, that didn't happen. So that's too bad. We'll shoot it with the 44 mag and see if it does it. All right, so we shot with the nine millimeter. Unfortunately, the 54 layers, it went through. So you're probably gonna need, I don't know, 60, 65 layers to stop the nine millimeter, but we'll shoot with the 44 mag and see if it stops that. It actually probably will. This penetrates a little less, but cause a lot more deformation. So we'll shoot it with that one. our impact point and that one actually blew through as well so um here i'll pull this off so there oh there it is right there actually wow it must have bounced off the back uh here's the slug stuck in that clay so it must have gone back hit the back and bounced back that's crazy that's what it would have done i don't know that's kind of wild there it is though Ooh, it's hot um so that penetrated too that is unfortunate so darn it so we had 70 layers on the small one and it, it worked it worked it stopped the 44 mag about 45 layers deep stopped the 9 million about 55 but we built this one at 54 that's just the way the math worked out in terms of the material we actually had. So we had enough for 54 layers, which is about right where we thought it would do the trick, but it just needs those extra layers in behind there to, uh, to actually stop that. So same with back face deformation is common. So a lot of times you'll shoot your soft armor and you will see the slug on the very surface, um, but you need all those extra layers in behind to one help stop it around, but also absorb that impact energy for back face. So obviously this just needs some more layers. So you're gonna need 65, close to 70 layers of this in order to, to stop that body or in order to stop those rounds. So anyway, we could go back and make another one, but I think the point is shown here. Really the idea here is this, just to show kind of, just kind of fun, say, hey, you know, this is what was used in World War II. How does it perform against more modern day body armor materials? Ballistic nylon is a great material, has tons of great use cases. Um, but as you can see here, I mean, this is a four pound panel and it is not enough. So we'd have to add another, I don't know, half an inch potentially to this and add another half a pound. So you'd be, you know, four to five pounds and an inch and a half thick at least probably in order to meet the level three A requirements. And they would have to taste back face on that. So let's just say uh, there's a reason this stuff was replaced with Kevlar. Uh, it can see that it's not super efficient at stopping bullets. So 
kind of interesting to see though, to see how far technology's come. I'll tell you, those of you wearing body armor, be grateful we have Kevlar and you're not packing this around every day to stop that. So anyway, that's for the video. We'll, uh, any questions, comments, anything else you want to see us test or try out, uh, definitely let us know. We'd love to do it. Till next time.